significant figures. This is a pretty important topic because when you use your calculator, sometimes you don't really know when to round. Significant figures are going to help that. When you take a reading of a measurement, let's say you're finding the length of something, and you get 14.1, that's centimeters, that's probably a pretty good measurement. But if you had a different measuring tool and you got 14.09 centimeters, that's probably a better tool because you notice this has two places after the decimal and this only has one. In a particular number, all the numbers are significant except the last digit, the uncertain digit. So therefore, in this first reading of 14.09, the first one I, on the top I should say, there are three certain and there is one uncertain digit. And that makes four significant figures total. The number of certain and the number of uncertain equals four. In this case, these two are certain and this is uncertain because remember it was a guess. This makes three significant figures. So the more significant figures in a number, the higher the chances that number is going to be accurate and precise. And of course, scientists would like to be both. Now, instead of having to do what I did here every time, there are some quick rules that govern significant figures, and we'll talk about those in a minute. I think your book goes through the set of four rules in your book. I have a shortcut method to show you. So, again, to review, significant figures indicates the precision of a measuring device because the measuring device, on the, in the case of my two examples, that could have four significant figures is probably a better measuring tool. It probably has more lines on it than the one that measured with three significant figures. The more significant figures, the more potentially accurate the measurement. And notice I say potentially because maybe you as the scientist are having difficulty reading that particular instrument. We can't blame everything on instrumentation. So the way to figure out how many significant digits are in a number is, um, and my shortcut way to do it, is called the Atlantic Pacific Rule. You can see here, here's the picture of the United States. Notice over here, this is the Atlantic Ocean, and this is the Pacific out here by California. And this helps us because to figure out the number of significant digits, we'll put a number in the middle of the United States. Let's say we have the number 4.25070. Goes away. 
the number of digits that remain uneaten is a number of significant digits. All right, so here we go. Decimal point is present here. Pac-Man's coming this way, but notice it, the first thing it hits is a four. Well, immediate death. So goes away, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine significant figures in this number. Notice the Pac-Man doesn't go here and jump over and eat this zero, and then this zero, and then these two. It doesn't like to hop around. The minute it hits something that's not zero, it's dead. So in this case, there are nine significant figures. Let's try another one. Let me erase this, which could take a few seconds. All right, um, how about 2,000, number 2,000. Now, it doesn't mean I can change the number. This is just telling us how many significant digits there are because that will help us round our number when we use a calculator. Is a decimal point absent or present? Hmm. Well, absent. Now, I know it's supposed to be here, but it isn't there, and therefore we call it absent. The Pac-Man is going to come towards this direction. It's going to eat and it will eat this one, this one, and this one. So we have one significant digit. Again, that doesn't mean the number 2,000 is the number 2. It means there's only one significant digit in this particular reading. So let's do some practice. How many significant figures are in these numbers? Now I'm going to show you, I think I have four of them. Um, I'm going to show you these numbers right away. You should probably stop the video, try them and then I'll give you the answers in a minute. The first one has four sig figs. Decimal points present, comes this way, four remain. This one has one significant figure. Those are eaten and the four remains. The next one has two significant figures. Decimal, uh, the decimal point is present, so we come from the left, and you notice, even the, the Pac-Man doesn't notice the decimal point, so munch, 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 it's the three, it dies, two remain. And this has three significant figures. Hopefully that was pretty easy for you. So how does this help us with rounding? Well, with multiplication and division, we have to use something about significant figures. We round to the fewer significant figures in a particular measurement. However, with addition and subtraction, we round to the fewer places after the decimal, to the right of the decimal point. Notice the difference. It's always, the similarity is they're always the fewer whatever. But multiplication and division have to do with significant figures, and addition and subtraction have to do with decimal places. Please make sure to know the difference, because if you confuse the two rules, and you're asked to do some rounding, and you can put them backwards, you will get the wrong answer many times. Now, there might be a chance that you just happen to get the right answer, but that's good luck. So please make sure to write this down and to know it, because you'll have to apply it. You won't have to tell me the rule, you'll just have to show me that you know the rule. So let's look at some examples. Now what I've done here is I have actually put a math problem down, and I've given the unrounded answer. In other words, when I add 5.34, and 9.3, and 6.12, I get the number 20.76. Now notice I didn't put centimeters, which I should have, so I didn't use the unit but sometimes you might have to add three units of length together and then you have to round. And the calculator will say 20.76. Some people don't know how to round that. Do they just write the whole thing that they see on the calculator or what? We make sure to round correctly. So this is an addition problem and we have to round to places after the decimal. So this one has two places after the decimal. This has one and this has two. We always go with the fewer. So that means one place after the decimal. This one has two, so we have to call it 20.8. Notice, I, I could say seven, but I have to look one past and notice it's five or higher. Then I make it 20.8. That's how you round that. Okay, the next question is a multiplication problem. 3.193 times four. So again, there might be some math problem. You have to round. You get 12.772 in the calculator. Multiplication problem. This one is a little tricky. I probably should have saved it for later in the list, but oh well, here it is. We have to go with the 
multiplication and division rule, of course, which involves significant figures. So that means how many significant figures does this have? Hopefully you said four. And what about this? It only has one. Therefore, our answer can only have one significant figure. Not just one digit, one significant figure. So essentially what we have to do, you see it's 12.77. Some people might want to say 13, because that's kind of close. But that has how many sig figs? Two. That's not right. Some people might want to say 1, because they just want to keep 1. But is the number 1 really close to the number 12.772? I don't think so. If you owe me about $12.77 and you give me a dollar and told me you're rounding to one sig fig, that's not going to go. So that doesn't work. The answer is actually 10. Now some of you might say, what? How the, how'd you get that? 12 and 10 aren't the same number. I agree with you. But the number 4 in the original problem isn't very significant. There's no decimal places. It's always one significant figure. So your answer has to only have one significant figure. So therefore, 10 is the answer because 10 is the closest number that has one significant figure to 12.772. Um, and that's how you do it. Remember, with this, thinking back to the Atlantic Pacific rule, the decimal point is absent. So we would come at the number from this direction, Atlantic, and this zero doesn't count. So there's only one significant figure in the number 10 anyway. That's how you run that one. That was a tricky one for the second one. All right, let's look at this. This is another addition problem. So three places after, two places after, you should get 11.85. Well, that's pretty easy compared to the second one. All right, here's where craziness starts to happen. We're dividing. 7.542 centimeters divided by 4.31 centimeters. Hmm. So division involves sig figs. Three, uh, pardon me, four sig figs, three sig figs. We have to round to three sig figs. Look at this huge number that comes up in the calculator. And we always take the first three. So 1.74 is pretty good, but the number right past the four is a nine. So we have to record it as 1.75. All right, here's an addition problem. 5.10 plus 0 .001. And of course, we get 5.101. Rounding, addition, remember, has to do with places after the decimal. We have 2 and 3. We always go with the smaller, so we need 2 after. We round that to 5.10. It's almost as if we didn't add that second number. But that's how you get it. And let's look at this one. I think this could be the last one. This one's pretty exciting. It's kind of like the second one. It has a little twist to it. So 5.34 times 9.3 times 6.12 gives you 303.93144. Hmm. What do you think? Well, multiplication involves sig figs. So we need how many? Hopefully you said two because of the 9.3. So our answer has to have two sig figs. So some people might say 304, because it's kind of close, but how many sig figs? Eh, three. Some people might say, trying to do this tricky thing, and say 300. Well, how many sig figs? We have one, and we need two. Then some people said, oh, how about 290 or 310? Again, trying to make the right size number, but can we really round 303 to 290? That's pretty far to, to round down, and 303.9 doesn't really round up to 310. If it was 309.9, okay, I could go with that. But that's not the case either. So what do we do? That has two, though, but they don't work here. What do we do? Well, we actually need the number 300. But can we express it as 300? No, because it has one sig fig. So we remember back to our first um, video about scientific notation. I'm sure some of you are thinking, you mean I have to remember that? You do. In this case, 3.0 times 10 to the 2 will get us the correct number of significant figures. Because 
In scientific notation, you may want to write this part down, because we didn't talk about scientific notation and, and rounding. The number of digits before the times 10 sign equals the number of significant figures. So this has two sig figs. You notice how I specifically wrote it. I didn't write 3 times 10 to the 2, because mathematically it would be the same thing. And some people are thinking, hey, 300, 3 times 10 to the 2, 3.0 times 10 to the 2, are all the same thing. And if you owe me $300, you're exactly right. But mathematically, they are the same. But the way they are expressed and the way they are written are different, because to a scientist, that tells us about the significant digits in the number. So actually, we have to write 3.0 times 10 to the 2 um, for that last calculation. So here's some practice problems, and I'm just going to show them to you and give you the answer. I'm giving you some practice using this calculator. So here are two numbers you have to multiply together. Some really, in the first case, a tiny number and a huge number. And when you finish, you should get 7.52 times 10 to the 11th. Notice I rounded correctly because there are um, three sig figs and four sig figs, and the answer had three significant figures. Okay. But again, I had to use my calculator to get it. So please practice with the calculator to make sure that you can use yours properly. Obviously, if you've never had a problem with the calculator, with scientific notation, you can just watch this and look, and you don't have to do it. But you're responsible for being able to do this. Okay, here's another one. This involves a little bit of scientific and a little bit of regular. And when you work it out, you get 8.46 times 10 to the 18. Now, I'm wondering, I don't think I rounded this one. I'm looking, I had written this before. But notice, if it's a multiplication problem, what should my answer be? Notice the two numbers involved. This first one has five sig figs, and this has two. So my answer really shouldn't be 8.46 times 10 to the 18. Although you probably get that on the calculator, what should it be? 8.5 times 10 to the 18, because we should only have two sig figs. So that was my first mistake on this slide. Hopefully I didn't make any more. OK, the next one's an addition problem. And notice, I get 1.9 times 10 to the 24. Again, uh, one place after the decimal, one place after the decimal. And that's how we're going to round these. It actually gets a little bit more complex than that, but we're going to leave it alone. And that's how we'll do it. So just make sure that you have a good working knowledge of your calculator, and things will be easy for you. The last thing we're going to talk about is graphing. Graphing is a very important skill. Things that you have to know about graphing are the independent variable is on the x-axis, and the dependent variable is on the y-axis. We'll spend a little bit more time about independent and dependent variable in class. I didn't want to do this on the video. But to refresh your memory from prior science classes, remember the independent variable is that which the scientist can control. And the dependent variable varies as a result of changing the independent variable. So when we're going to graph data around that, the independent variable, that which we control, is on the x-axis, and the dependent variable is on the y-axis. Make the graph so that the scale is small is as small as possible so that the entire page is filled. You really want to make sure that you don't have a tiny graph. You want to fill up the graph paper if you're doing it by hand. Now, you all should load on Logger Pro onto your computers, and then there's a graphing program that comes with it. You're welcome to use that um, so that you don't have to worry about scale. But if you're asked to do something by hand, do make sure that you fill up the entire space. 
have evenly spaced increments. You don't want to have, for example, um, on the x-axis, you don't want to start with a 0 here and then say 5, 20, 23, something crazy like that. So if, you, if your first tick mark is 5, the next one has to be 10, 15, and 20, etc. You want to keep even increments. And of course, if possible, you would like to have 0, 0 on your scale. Um, usually we don't use the little break, but um, depending on the data, sometimes you have to do that. It just depends. Usually for us, 0, 0 is the um, corner of the graph. And of course, you want to label the axis with the title of the, you know, the variable and the unit. Right? You should also label the entire graph with a title. And those are just some things that you probably already knew about graphing, but I wanted to remind you. So we'll be doing some graphing. We'll be talking about independent and